guys, it's Alex Woman. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. Today I'm doing a spotlight on a company from Wee Bonnie, Scotland called Joram Studio. This is the first time I've ever talked about, sniffed, reviewed, mentioned, or even known about a brand from Scotland. So I'm really excited to tell you about them. This is kind of a half spotlight, mainly because I've smelled all of these before. I have tried all of them on skin prior to this video and also I'm smelling the main line of their fragrances or the first line. They actually have a couple of different ones. So a little bit about them. They launched in 2019. The founder is a lady called Chloe Mullen and the perfumer is called Ewan McCall. He's done a couple of things for a couple of other brands. Um, recently I reviewed Neanderthal Light for Neanderthal. He made Neanderthal dark for them, so he's got his fingers in a few pies, but all of these fragrances are him. They are his brainchild. And what's really exciting about this brand is, oh, they're based in Edinburgh as well, I should tell you that. What's exciting about this brand is it's all about botanicals. As far as I know, I mean, I'd like to think that a lot of the ingredients in here are sourced from the local area. It definitely sounds like it when you see the note lists. I'm gonna read you the note lists of all of these fragrances because there's something really exciting about them. There's a lot of natural sounding things that I've never heard of. So it kind of forces you to make your own opinion because I don't know what that is, I don't know what that is, but some of them sound amazing. So if anyone out there is really into horticulture and botany, then, um, and you know what they are, please feel free to share in the comments. They're also a very ethic brand, ethical brand. They, they focus on working with, I guess, sustainable materials. They're very environmentally friendly and all of that good stuff. So they've got a good message. So it's a good starting point for this brand. So the line I'm gonna be sniffing is called uh, Progressive Botany Volume One. They do have another line called Psycho Terratica. And then there's a third line that's just started, which has a fragrance called Phantosmia in it. But I'm gonna smell the main six, or the first six, I'll say, because they probably consider all of their fragrances to be the main ones. So, like I said, they're, it's all about botany. The names of the perfumes, a lot of the ingredients, like I said, are just kind of interesting and I've never heard them. So that's what piqued my interest. I'm so glad that I got these. I got these samples quite a while ago, actually. I'm not affiliated with Joram. They are my samples. I am reviewing them. So I'm just gonna start. Let's go. So I'm gonna start with a fragrance called Cardus. And I'm gonna spray it on the card here. Cardus is, I mean, this brand has sent me Googling like a crazy person. I just wanna thank them, actually, because I've actually learned so much from just looking into this brand and studying them a little bit. I've learned a lot about botany. I'm totally a horticulturist now. I should get a job. Cicardus is a species of plant that is in the thistle family. So either it's a name or the botanical name for a thistle or it's, a, it's in the family of thistles. So that's what this fragrance is themed on. And gosh, I'm gonna tell you the notes because the note lists here are spectacular. So the notes of this are chamomile, Bengal pepper, honey, clary sage, sea holly. So you're, we're already beginning with the notes that are like, huh? Marjoram tea. Uh, I think that's marjoram tea. Myrtle, rose absolute, vetch, clove bud, and heart's tongue. And the base notes, or they call it the fade. So I guess that's the after impression or the dry down. Is tuberose, musk thistle, heliotrope, Tormentil or tormental mahogany cocoa absolute tobacco can't even pronounce this one M is it mayum moom deer tongue and cherry wood so they say it's unashamedly polarizing cardus is a blend of jagged leaves herbal seeds and xeric barks so this one to me is really interesting I, it feels to me like there's something licorice in there I guess it's one of these barks or a root or something like that and it's quite soft it's not unpleasant but it feels it feels definitely very planty but not the green side of plants it's more about maybe twigs and things like that so it's rooty in a licorice way there's a powderiness in here as well 
I don't really smell anything like tuberose or anything obviously floral. This, it feels kind of softly brown, if that makes sense. And it, it doesn't necessarily feel like a perfume to me. And I don't think that's kind of what they're going for here. I think, I think it's more about look at these fantastic materials and let me show you what I can do. So this one to me, yeah, it's a soft, gentle, it's not a, a whack in the face one. And there's something that feels a little bit like fennel or something that's related to that in that sort of family in there. And a, a tiny bit earthy, but not like upturned earth or soil or anything like that. Gently earthy. So it's, it's interesting and it's not too overpowering. So that's good too. They say that there's fermented leaves in here as well and incense. So there's a lot of notes listed. I don't smell so many of them. I mean, obviously there are some that I, I I've never heard of before, so I don't, I can't comment, but it's well blended enough that it feels kind of like one to me. So it's not my favorite of the bunch, but I do like that use of almost like crushed brown leaves. It's kind of autumnal, a little bit green, a little bit herbal, and there's that spark of aniseedy fennel type licorice going on. So. I like it, gentle. This would be nice in a candle. It's not something I would wear, but I appreciate the, the kind of naturalistic side of it. It's not harsh, it's got a, a softness to it. So I'm gonna move on to the next one. Okay, I've just randomly picked one out. Okay, this one is called Arborist. This one is actually my favorite of the bunch. When I've been reminded now, I might change my mind, but this one really stuck out to me. So an Arborist, Oh, this is good. Okay, so an arborist is a, a likened to a tree surgeon. It's someone that cultivates trees, vines, plants, things like that. It's a profession. Uh, I don't know if an arborist and a tree surgeon are the same thing or that it's the same field, but they're slightly different. But it's a person who cultivates, maybe harvests trees and things like that. So this one is the strongest. I really, really like this one. Uh, let me tell you the notes. So this one is their ode to enchanting woodlands, the forests of Scotland. This one is a super woody one. So, oh my gosh, this is really cool. So, so it's quince, honey, saffron, osmanthus absolute, magnolia and burdock. Burdock, I've only ever had experience with the drink, dandelion and burdock, which I absolutely love. Uh, the fade or the dry down is papyrus, mugwort, Rose Absolute, Tuberose, Myrrh Absolute, Spruce Resin, Douglas Fir, Labdanum, Jatamancy, Malt and Lichen. So this one is very deeply woody. It's the darkest one of the bunch. It's really smooth as well. And for some reason it gives me like a Middle Eastern vibe. Like it's just touching on being oody, but that can come from a number of things. That can be a combination of the resins in here with very deep woods. That can sometimes happen. It's like an oud accord has been created, maybe unintentionally, maybe intentionally, I don't know. But this is really lovely. You can really feel um, the resins very strongly as well. And I wouldn't necessarily say that it is evergreen or super piney it's more like falling down a hole in a forest and going right to the depths of the core of what a forest smells like definitely really cool it's very smoky as well i even feel like i'm smelling birch tar sometimes because it's got that super kind of not super but i can feel like a tarry type dark resin as well uh, I really like it. And do you know what? It actually reminds me a little bit of Promise by Frederick Mao, which is probably why I'm tying together this kind of Middle Eastern oudy type thing. But it's not a typical oud. It doesn't smell like a, what, a million other ouds. It's just, that's where it goes for me. It's got the greenery. It's got the, not ferny, but it's got a, a type of pininess, but it's really focused on resins and wood. And I'm a big fan of this one. It's the standout for me. This is really good on skin as well. It's really punchy and it's the strongest of all of them. So that one's Arborist, one to try out if you want to. I mean, if you like your dark, heavy stuff, I'm a fan. Let's move on to the next one. So the next one is called Phloem. Phloem, it's a really strange word, Phloem. I had to look this up. 
This one drives me insane. And I'll explain in a minute, but I'll tell you the notes. Oh gosh, so I, before I did this video, I looked up what Phloem is and it is, the only way to explain it is how we have veins and capil capillaries and arteries that transport blood and oxygen through our bodies. Phloem is what plants have to transport I guess maybe vitamins <laughs> or um, oxygen and things like that. It's like a plant or a flower's veins, basically. That's what phloem is. And I absolutely love the opening of this, but the dry down is what makes me really, really angry. But let me tell you the notes. So it says, <clears throat> it says like neon trident, vascular blooms rip through merc mercurial waters, candied rose sky, rose sky, floods the coastal coastal cottage, provoking lucid dreams of an obsessive selky skin love. Lip smack with saline dab. That is a very wacky no, uh, description. <laughs> anyway, it says passion fruit, rhubarb, mulberry, nasturtium, honeysuckle, blaeberry, camellia, and oyster plant. I want to smell these things individually. I'm so intrigued. My, I'm just so curious. And then the fade or the dry down is meadow sweet, gauze, amber seeds, which perfume is used to replicate the smell of musk, sesame, amaris, tonka, bean, absolute. So this one is, the opening is absolutely stunning. I really like this. It's got a beautiful crisp floral smell to it, which it smells like a floral that I've not tried. I, I couldn't pin it to anything. It's kind of semi-fresh and woody and fl flowery at the same time. And it's got this kind of crystalline, almost petrol type smell to it. I'm not saying it smells like gasoline, but sometimes when I smell things, and maybe it's terpenes or something like that. This is very pretty and very a departure from the others. So they're very, all of them are so different from each other, which I really like. And it feels like, almost like a white musk in here as well. Oh, this is really good. There's something earthy in the background too. And I really like the fruity side of it. If you ever tried a fragrance that has rhubarb in it, I get that from it as well. So it's like a kind of sharp, tart red fruitiness in amongst these really nice florals that they're not airy, but it's, it's a lovely crystalline floral. That's the only way I can describe it. So the reason this one drives me absolutely insane because I, is because I love the opening so much. But the dry down goes to me, and this is gonna be a negative thing that I'm gonna have to say. The dry down goes to this on my skin like a, a synthetic oud, and I don't know where or why or how or where that comes from, but the dry down to me smelled like a lot of ouds that I've smelled in certain Middle Eastern shops where it, it's just kind of assaulting and not like real oud at all. It's just that, um, I mean, it's not happened yet but it goes to this oody place that I've smelled a lot of times. It's kind of the one that hits you at the back of the throat. So it drives me crazy because the opening is so beautiful. I just don't like where it goes. And that's just my personal preference and my personal taste. And that's just what I get from it. I'm gonna spray this one on my hand actually because I just, I really, really like this one. Floam, floam. I was calling it Floem for the longest time, but. Yeah, the opening's great. It smells. There's something that smells like seeds in it as well, in a really interesting way. It almost smells like it's got coriander seeds or some kind of earthy seed in amongst all of this. There's fruitiness in here, there's woodiness, there's crisp flowers, and it's really, it's a little bit bracing and it kind of wakes you up a little bit. But then when it dried, oh God, it just went downhill and I'm really sad because that would have possibly been my favorite. But anyway, we're gonna move on to the fourth one. So the next one is called Trimerous or Trimerous? Trimerous. And what that means is um, a plant, I think, or a flower that has a set of three, th three petals, three stamens, three something. It's tri, so maybe it's Trimerous, something like that. But this is the brand's Iris. It's their Oris Root Iris Fragrance. And this actually featured on my 10 Iris Fragrance videos, if anyone remembers that because when I tried it, I thought it was fantastic. This is iris done in a nice earthy way. 
not a powdery way. Uh, it's kind of a bit papery. There's a bit of a touch of something darker going on in the background. So this isn't one of those pretty friendly Oris Root perfumes. It's more edgy and I really like it. It's really well balanced. So let me get the notes for you. Oh, this is really good. If you like irises, this one's really good. So it says there is an there is eerie silence after the harvest. From the small square window, we await the autumnal shift. Dusting across fields of hair-eared crowns, we pray the rare roots make it through the hoar. So this is carrot seed, bergamot, nectarine, thyme, another note I've never heard of, Sicily, Sicily, pink pepper, juniper, cloudberry, and angelica root. I've seen cloudberries before. They're orange and they've got, they're like a, like a little mini, they're like a raspberry kind of. I think that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, they are. They're orange and they, they're tart, fruity little berries. Uh, then you've got oris butter, kombucha, which is what's in lots of these health drinks now. Centauri, suede, oud, musk, synthetic musk, ambergris, styrax, vanilla, and incense. So this one, oh, I really like this. There's a waxiness coming from the oris root here. They're, they're so hard to describe. I mean, I hope I'm doing a good job. I've Sometimes fragrances just stump you and I have tried these on my skin, but now I'm smelling them again. It's, um, this is really, really lovely. So I like that this one is playing with a little bit of dark and a little bit of light at the same time. And the, the Oris is the star of the show here, but it's perfectly placed. It's not like that's all you can smell. Oris, is, can, Oris can be quite an unforgiving note, you know, it can overtake, it's, it, it's just, it's very so distinctive that you can't really get away from it sometimes, but this is a pretty woody, um, kind of earthy and not powdery iris whatsoever. It's got the kind of, I would say the lightest dusting of pink pepper as well, so it's making it a tiny bit spicy. But this is about roots altogether. You've got angelica root in here as well, which I've smelled, which it smells kind of like potatoes actually. <laughs> but um, yeah, seedy, rooty, not powdery iris with some crisp notes going on and a little bit of spice. Um, that's all I can say about this one because it's a tricky one to describe, but this is for oris lovers for sure. So the next one is called Medulla Ray. Another one I had to look up, what on earth is a medulla ray? And a medulla ray is <clears throat> the lines or fissures, maybe you want to call them, that are present in certain species of tree bark. It's the lines that go through the grain. <clears throat> so I had to look that one up. This one is very odd. Let me get the notes in the description for you. It says, rays of Tuscan springtime glint between the strokes of the woodworker's plane. The midday air fills with feels heavy with the scent of blushed fruit and waxen leaf. So it's fig leaf, cardamom, olive, juniper, and frankincense. Then you have oris, butter, rose absolute, pomegranate, myrrh, vetiver, guyac wood, papyrus, hay, birch, cedarwood, castorium, valerian, and sandalwood oil. Wow, so this one to me smells like what I can, it smells, it reminds me of when I was at school and we used to do DT, design technology, and it was a wood workshop and metal and making things, which I was terrible at by the way, but this smells like a lathe. When we used to use a lathe at school and we would use it to shave the wood, you would get this kind of hot wood and metal smell. And this has been achieved here massively. I don't know if it was meant to be achieved, but it, it really smells like that. It smells like a, a wood, a workshop, a wood workshop with all of the things that go with that, not just the wood, but the, the machines and sawdust. And it's got this almost medicinal feeling to it as well. This one again for me is outside the realm of perfume. It doesn't feel like a perfume, but it's definitely impressive in in the way that it smells really cool it's this one is strong it's kind of second strongest to arborist i would say because it's that deep it's really woody like that 
There's something in here that's so odd. There's a lot of things in here that are odd, but this one's got something almost, again, like terpenic or like white spirit, but in the background, not it's not at the forefront. This one really lets the wood shine, but a really interesting fragrance. I've not smelled anything like this before, and that's why I'm excited about this brand. They, they are making things that I've never tried. I would be interested to try the Psyche Teretica line as well to see what that's like. But yeah, this smells like working into a wood craftsman's shop or a carpenter's workshop. Interesting. So the last one on the list is called Nectary. And I don't think that one needs explaining. It's about nectar. And I will say from my memory that this one is the most approachable. This one is the most familiar. This one is definitely the prettiest along with uh, Trimerus or Trimerus. Trimerous, <laughs> Triceratops, Rex, who knows? <laughs> yeah, this one's really gorgeous. I mean, first off, before I read you, read you the description and stuff, this one is the most floral of the bunch. It's got this honeyed rose type smell. It smells like white flowers as well. And there is a little bit of skank going on in there. This, there is something way behind that feels maybe like a synthetic deer mask, like a dark mask, but it's not, it doesn't overtake, it's not like that. This is soft, really pretty, maybe orange blossom, I think, and it's a bit fruity as well, so let me just quickly read it and then we will discuss further. I wonder, I wonder what that is, there is definitely an animalic in here. So this is, um, born of a daydream to create a garden for the skin, equal parts flower, leaf and soil. So it's bramble, cranberry, peach, and rose absolute. Then you have oud, ambergris, rose root, olibanum, self heal, self heal, castorium, civet, labdan labdanum absolute, and musk. So it has three animalic notes in there, and you can definitely smell them. So on the one hand, you have this gorgeous, pretty, what did I say? It was fruity, so I can smell. I wouldn't say it was peachy, but there's definitely a, a fruitiness here. It smells like white flowers. That's all the pretty side. And then it has a dark side. You have these dark animalics. So it kind of pulls you in two directions, which is kind of cool. And I might wear this one today, in fact. I'm gonna put it on my skin now because I think this one's really pretty. This is, if you wanna dive into the brand and you don't wanna go full on botanical strange ingredients then i would maybe start with nectary it stands out as being approachable but still with an edge to me yeah this is really cool it feels honeyed i don't know why i why i think that oh gosh on skin the animalic is more prominent but yeah this is a split down the middle it's animalic and it's um flowery and fruity at the same time so i like that one too i actually like all of them Arborist. Arborist is the standout though because I like my dark stuff, I like my brooding, mysterious type smells. I like foresty type of smells, so Arborist is the standout but all of them are worth mentioning for sure. So their fragrances come, just to sum up, their fragrances come in 15 mils, 30 mils and 50. It might not be all for all of them but that's kind of the gist. They start at around 49 pounds and go up to 125 some of them a little bit more this line i think is 125 but check out their website anyway i'll put a link in the description so you can go and have a look at the lovely photos on their site it's very natural and there's lots of pictures of plants and it's kind of calming to to view their website so anyway that was my spotlight on Arborist? No, it's not Arborist. So that was my spotlight on Joram Studio from Scotland. I hope you guys liked it. And uh, yeah, that's it really. This was the main line or the first line, Progressive Botany Volume 1. I'm Ouch Womano, trying to make the world smell better one video at a time. I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.